Hi, my name's Andy, and this is the sixth talk on Scheme. This is uh, about lambda functions, which are a feature of Scheme. Um, but actually, what I'm going to do is uh, use explaining lambda, which is a relatively simple concept, um, to go through some examples of some really cool ways of using functions. And we're going to happen to define functions in this way, this lambda way. So I'm going to talk about why they're called lambda functions, uh, what they are, which is anonymous functions, as in functions with no name. Uh, I'm going to look again at defining functions, which we looked at in uh, previous videos in the series, uh, in a new way. Then I'm going to take you through two examples of um, some of the massive power you have in your hands when you're using functions in Scheme. Um, you can do really fundamental deep things. So before we start, um, I observed uh, on the internet that uh, some of the implementation of the universe obviously leaked through and one day and someone caught it on camera. Clearly God is using Lisp uh, to implement this whole thing. Uh, let's move on to uh, the name, Lambda Function. So here's Alonso Church, uh, cool looking guy, I think you'll agree. Um, Alonso Church invented this thing called the Lambda Calculus, which is a way of describing processes in a mathematical form. It, it was a piece of maths used to describe processes, or what we might call now programs. And Scheme, the whole language really, is an attempt to translate the Lambda Calculus into an actual programming language that you can use to program computers. Uh, so in a way, um, really Scheme itself should be called Lambda. Uh, but actually one of the things within Scheme is called Lambda, which kind of makes sense. Um, because the uh, the bit of Scheme that's called Lambda is the bit which is the core of the Lambda calculus. So um, let's have a look at, uh, at Lambda. So here we are, we have, we are calling the procedure, built-in procedure in Scheme, which is called Lambda. That's how it's spelt. Um, it's a Greek letter, um, and what lambda takes in is a list of symbols, which is where that bracket x, y comes from, and then a function body. So what this is defining is a procedure or a function which takes two arguments and um, does the body to those arguments. So in this case, it returns the result of calling the plus function with the arguments x and y, where x and y are the two arguments to the function. Um, but nowhere in this definition is this procedure given a name. Um, we'll see how it's still possible to use a procedure if it hasn't got a name in a second. First thing, if we type in lambda into the interactive scheme interpreter, uh, scheme will reply to you, uh, you've made a procedure. That's a procedure that you've made. So a function and a procedure. Um, that's what lambda does, defines a function. Um, so, well, what can we do with it? How can we uh, get hold of that procedure that we've defined and do something with it? Well, here's one way. We'll use the define procedure um, to define a symbol called S. So this is not defining a procedure or a function, this is just defining a symbol called S. But then what S is defined to be is a procedure. Um, it's the result of calling lambda, the same lambda we had above, which we already seen that that was a procedure. So what we're saying is define S to be the procedure which takes in X and Y and returns the result of adding them up. So what does that mean? Well what that means is that now S is that procedure or is referring to that procedure. So when we call S with two arguments we get back the result of adding them up. Okay so uh, we can take a moment here to just think a little bit about what's happened here. So if you look at the lower of the two lines on the screen here, that's uh, equivalent to what we've just done, but we've, we've called it sum instead of s. So the lower line is defining a procedure called sum, which takes two arguments um, and adds up those arguments. But if you look at the top line here, well, what does that do? Well, what that does is defines a procedure called sum, which takes two arguments and adds up those arguments. And actually, the top line is just a slightly more convenient way of writing what we could have written in the bottom way. So actually, lambdas are more fundamental than this, uh, this top syntax um, because you can define this top syntax in terms of lam lambda. Um, <coughs> so uh, we don't actually need to do that top line at all. We could have done everything we've done so far using just that bottom line where we 
we name we make a procedure and then we name it later but it's uh, so-called syntactic sugar it makes our lives easier it's easy to understand the code if we use the top form but they are exactly equivalent okay so let's uh, jump into an example of how we might use this um, and beware this gets uh, meta it gets tricky um, but it's seriously cool and uh, uh, Introducing you to Lambda is my excuse for taking you through two really cool examples. So let's look at the first one. Let's define a procedure called mcons, which takes in two arguments A and B. And the body of that procedure is a Lambda, which means it returns, this procedure returns a procedure. And the procedure that it returns takes one argument, which is cumd. So this Lambda expression is defining a procedure and the first thing you give to lambda is the names of the arguments. There's one argument, it's called cumd. And then the body of this procedure that we're returning is an if expression. It says if cumd is equal to car, in quotes, then return a, which is one of the two arguments introduced into the original procedure. Otherwise, return b. So in order to understand this, you're going to need to grasp closures, which um, I think we're talking number four. Um, one of the earlier videos um, is about closures. You're going to need to understand that uh, to get what's going on here. Basically, we have a procedure which takes in two arguments, but what it returns is a procedure, and the procedure, the procedure that it returns has access to the two arguments that were passed into the original function. So, now that we've got a, uh, a procedure called mcons, let's make another procedure called mcar and another procedure called mkudur. And what they take in is is um, they take they both take in an argument called pair. Uh, now that could be anything, but we're going to make some assumptions about pair. We're going to assume that pair is actually a procedure, because the body of the umkar and umkudur procedures calls pair and passes in an argument of either car or kudur. So actually, what we're expecting to be passed in to these bottom two procedures is the return value of that top procedure because that top uh, the, the, that top procedure returns a procedure which takes one argument uh, which could be car or could be something else in this case we've called it could or so these bottom two procedures are going to call the thing that was returned from the top procedure with either car or could or which means you get back either a or b so why would we do all this well, maybe the names of these procedures will help you. Will have helped you predict. So let's define a symbol called foo, um, which is the result of mcons one two, and then let's ask for the mcar of foo. We get back one because we get back that a, because mcar passes in the car string, which gets us into the first part of the if, which gets us back. A from the original definition of that procedure, and in this case A is 1 because that's the first argument passed into mcons. And let's ask what mcudder is. Well, mcudder of foo is 2. So, what we've managed to do using only lambda and the usual um, constructs in scheme is we've made three procedures called mcons, mcar, and mcudder which to the outside, to someone observing from the outside, behave exactly the same way as cons, car and kudu. Now maybe you thought that cons, car and kudu were so fundamental because you were making pairs which are a key part of scheme that you couldn't, um, you couldn't possibly write those procedures in scheme. You'd have to have, make them as built-in parts of the interpreter. But actually you can. Once you have lambda or once you have the ability to uh, return a function from a function and you have this concept of closure um, you can implement cons car and kudu um, in scheme itself and actually I mean technically you don't need lambda to do this you you could have done it with named functions because they're exactly equivalent uh, it's just much much easier to write the code if you use lambda not worry about giving them names that you don't care about so we have managed to implement pairs using only procedures. Uh, and perhaps you're starting to see why the lambda calculus, which is based on procedures, uh, is quite so powerful. Okay, let's move on to another example. If you thought that one was hard to understand, let's try this one. Let's define a symbol called N0, 
and what that is is the result of this lambda procedure so lambda is defining a function which takes no arguments that's where there's a bracket bracket there and the return value of this procedure which takes no arguments is null so here's this n0 thing n0 is a procedure taking no arguments returning null let's define a procedure called mink which takes in one argument called x and what that does is it returns a function taking no arguments which returns x when you call it okay. and now let's define a procedure called mdec which takes in a procedure called x takes, sorry, takes in an argument called x which it assumes is a procedure and it calls x with no arguments and returns the return value of that okay, so why would we do all this? Well, let's define n1 to be mink n0, and let's define n2 to be mink of n1, and so on, through a few more. Um, and just a reminder there of um, some of the code we've already seen, so that we can understand what's going on here. So, what happens when we call n0? We know that n0 is a procedure, because it, it's the result of calling lambda. What happens when we call n0? Any guesses? Well, you've got the definition of n0 up there. The result is null, which is also written bracket bracket. So n0, when you call n0, you get bracket bracket. What happens when you call n1? Well, n1 is mink of n0. So it's a procedure which takes no arguments and returns x. And x, in this case, is n0. So when you call n1, you get back the procedure n0 so you get back you get back n0 okay well, what happens when you call n2 well by the same logic you get back the procedure n1 now actually in this case my scheme interpreter doesn't know it's called n1 but it is it's the it's the procedure called n1 um, but it's a procedure according to scheme okay so let's define a few more functions let's define something called m0 question mark which takes in one argument x and the answer is true if the result of calling x gives us null and false otherwise. So we call x and then we ask, is it null? And let's define another procedure called mequal, which takes in two arguments. And the body of that is a cond expression. So if, um, if x is m0, so if m0 returns true for x, then uh, the return value of mequal is the result of calling m0 for y and then the other way round, if y is m0 then the result is um, if x is m0, this is a weird way of putting it but it kind of, it's kind of symmetrical um, otherwise we do some other stuff, so let's let's think this through, so if x is m0, let's imagine for a second that that means x is 0, uh, so if x, x is 0 um, and y is 0, then this mequal is going to come back as true. If x is 0 and y is not 0, it's going to come back as false. And if y is 0 and x is not 0, it's going to come back as false. Okay, so we've covered all the cases where either of them is 0, and we have to deal with the else expression. And what the else expression does is it calls mdec on x and mdec on y and then asks whether they're equal. So uh, if we knew what mdec did, we might have some idea what was going on there. So let's ask a few questions and find out where this gets us so far. So um, are n1 and n0 equal? Well, the answer is no. But is n1 equal to n1? The answer is yes. That hash t means true, hash f means false. So is 4 equal to 5? n4 equal to n5? No. That is n4 equal to n4? Yes. Okay, so let's do one more thing. Let's do the hard part. Let's define another procedure called m plus. Takes in two arguments, um, and the body of this procedure is an if expression. If y is m0, we return x. Otherwise, we return the result of calling ourselves recursively, having called mink on x and mdec on y. So, um, 
maybe you won't explain that yet. I'll explain that in a second. Okay, so um, what do you need? How much convincing do you need that something is a number? What's the definition of zero? Well, here's one definition of zero for you that you might find satisfactory. Zero is the thing that you can add to any other number and you get back that number. In other words, um, adding zero to x, the result of adding zero to x is equal to x. So here's what I, how I've expressed that at the top here. Um, the result of adding n0 using the n plus function to n2 is equal to n2. And the answer is true. So does that convince you that n0 is sort of the same as 0? Do you see where I'm going here? Well, another property we would need is that if you add n0 to 2, it's not equal to something which is not equal to 2. And that is indeed true. You add n0 to n2 using the plus function, um, it's not equal to n3. So here's another thing you'd like to be true for numbers. You would like uh, 0 plus 2 to be different from 1 plus 2, and it is indeed, that comes out false. But you would like 2 plus 3 to be equal to 5, wouldn't you? Yes, and it is. Okay, what about 5 plus 5 being equal to 4 plus 3 plus 3? Well, that would be nice, wouldn't it? And that is indeed true. So, um, what we've got here is some things which behave a bit like numbers. Now that you've seen what, I, what I'm trying to do, let me try and explain how I did it. Maybe you've picked it up already. But let's have a look. So, we need something to be zero. We don't really care what it is, so long as it's identifiable. All our numbers are going to be procedures, so zero needs to be a procedure as well. And we're defining n0, this thing we're going to use to represent zero, uh, to be the procedure which returns null. We need to be able to increment and decrement numbers, as in add one and remove one. So what we do is, to increment a number, we return a function which returns the, the lower number. So uh, to increment n0, we, we create a function which, when called, returns n0. And to increment n1, we, we create a function which, when called, returns n1. Which means that decrementing is really easy. So in dec, of x is just call x because when you call n2 you get n1, when you call n1 you get n0 and so on. So um, dec is nice and simple and mink is actually very straightforward, it's just a, a function taking no arguments which returns the thing we're incrementing. With me so far. Okay, so uh, this is me just um, writing out what you've already heard. We can define uh, 1 to be just increment 0, define 2 to be increment 1 and so on through all this. So, what's the definition of zero? Well, we already know. The only one of these functions which returns null, when you call it, is n0. So, the definition of zero in our system is when you call it, does it return null? Straightforward now, right? And then equality is nice and easy. If they're both zero, um, they're equal. Otherwise, recursively call this mequal function and reduce both of them by one. That's what index does. So if you ask whether uh, 3 is equal to 2, we just say, well, neither of them 0. So let's ask whether 1 is equal, what did I say, 3 is equal to 2? Uh, uh, ask whether 2 is equal to 1, or and then 1 equals 0, and then you get your answer. No, they're not equal. So you just reduce by 1 recursively until one of them 0, and then ask, is the other one 0? Nice and easy. So that's how mequal works. And finally, how does plus work? Well, this, this function doesn't need to use our special numbers at all. We could use um, ordinary numbers for this. Basically, one way of defining addition is uh, if y is 0, the answer is x. Otherwise, return the result of adding up x increased by 1 and y decreased by 1. This obviously, all of this only works for positive integers, um, which is all we've defined. But yeah, if basically, if you add 1 to x, take 1 off y, and then call plus again, eventually y is going to be 0 and x is going to be the answer. And that's all there is to it. So you can define numbers in Scheme. You can build numbers without any concept of numbers when you came in. You can just make them up. That's how powerful functions with closures are.
um, and that's why they deserve this special name Lambda and that's why Scheme is so cool. Would you really do this? Well no, for a start you'd have to name all the numbers you ever wanted to use by calling all these functions. The Scheme I've done only works for positive integers, I'm sure you could do something for negative. Um, uh, it's also unbelievably inefficient. Uh, you know, to represent 100 you need a chain of 100 procedures, all of which return the next one down the chain when you call them. Um, you wouldn't do it this way, it's more of a principle argument. It's, it, it's on a similar level to um, uh, the work that was done 100 years or so ago to try and uh, represent numbers in terms of sets. So you didn't have to have a concept of number, you just had a concept of set and you could build up the concept of number from sets. Well this is an equivalent thing really, saying you can build the concept of number from a function. And who knew that functions were that cool? And that's it for today.